couple years down the road, you're sitting at home on a a Tuesday night. A lazy Tuesday, as you like to say. Lazy Tuesday. Yep. Why? I just don't do anything? Yeah, it's just one of those nights where you're not doing anything and you're just going to kind of hang out at home and okay. do your own thing. You know, a lazy Tuesday. Probably throw like a fucking pizza in the oven, you know, so it's something like that where it's like, I'm not okay, going to cool. cook. I'm not going to cook for myself. You know, I'm going to make, I'm going to, you know, at least not beyond like throwing a pizza in the oven. Sure. No knife skills. I'm not turning the fucking range on. I'm not going to clean a bunch of dishes. I'm just throwing a fucking pizza. It's a, it's a lazy Tuesday. Hell yeah. Lazy Tuesday is off to a fucking great start. I got to be honest with you. You got like a, it's like a, it's like a Supreme pizza, sausage, pepperoni, green pepper, onion. It's a rising crust frozen pizza. You get a bottle of fucking Frank's Red Hot out from your oh, fridge. Yes. You sit it on the kitchen table. And you just wait. The smell of that frozen pizza permeates throughout your home. You love it. You like close off all the doors to the other rooms of your place. You like you you like love you I love insulate. The, uh, yeah, you insulate yourself. You want to bathe in that pizza smell, you know? Yeah. You bought these like uh vent covers off of Amazon. You got like a step ladder, you're getting up and you're like putting these covers over the vent so no scent escapes. <laughs> You got the, the TV on. Uh, what am I watching? You're watching. It's a. It's a it's a, a biopic about uh, Pee Wee Herman. Oh. What is it? it What's it called? It's it's called. <laughs> Caught jacking off. Oh, man. He was so it much is, more. It is not made with the consent of the Herman estate. Oh, no. Right. Um, it was one time. Come on. He was so much more than that. Well, oh, what, 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 hey, I, I'm with you, you know, but yeah. it, it's like it's like you're watching this thing because it's like funny, not because it's like good of how biased it is. Like, and... Yeah, it's it's like a Christian. Like a publisher put out this biopic all about how Pee Wee, you know, let the devil into his life and they caught him jacking off in that theater, you know, okay. and, you know, he died, you know, and, and I, just, yeah. it's just, it's just a whole, it's a whole thing about it, you know, interviewing a bunch of Christians who like didn't get that Pee Wee was like a, a kind of a crude character from the start, you know, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they I, just, like, I they, would absolutely watch this. This sounds really cool, actually. It's very, it's very, it's it's funny, right? It's just uh, it's a it's really bad. It's it's a terrible movie called Caught Jacking Off. <laughs> right? They uh they go to the theater. That's just where it. There's no there's no subtitle. There's, it's just called Caught Jacking Off. Caught it doesn't Jack tell you anything about no. what the sub. Okay, so it doesn't the, even the say cover of it story. is uh the cover of it is uh a, 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 a on a on a a darkly lit comedy club stage. It's it says caught jacking off, right? And then there's like a, a stool with like a red bow tie on it in a spotlight. And there's yeah. just the floor is really gross. That's all I'll say. Oh god. That's the worst marketing ever because I think there's a there's a certain age of people who would see that and know instantly what they're referring to, but there's a lot of young people who don't. What a dumb thing. But yeah, you know, cares. it's uh, it's one of these like uh, again, it's like I'd a, love to like watch Christian. It. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like a, a Christian publishing house. You know, this the studio puts it out. It's just uh, it's really like um, I mean, you know, there's nepotism everywhere. So there's like this young Christian filmmaker who wanted to like make a movie 
and they didn't quite trust him with any of their, you know, um, fictional, you know, Christ driven romances, which is like really their bread and butter. You know, it's like a Hallmark movie, but yeah, it's like a Hallmark movie, but you know, there's a lot more God in it. You know, there's a lot of Christ in their movies. And, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the heads of the, of this studio, their, their son is, uh, wants to make movies, you know, and he, he didn't, they didn't trust him with a Christ driven romance yet. So they, you know, they let him pick something that was a little bit more academic in nature, which, you know, kind of fits with his background. Uh, and so, yeah, he made caught jacking off. Christian nepotism. It's real, baby. I guess. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of strange. Uh, I mean, is it fun to watch? Oh, it's it's fun. It's very fun to watch. It's just a bunch of like yeah. Christian conservative people up in arms about their kids, you know, and, and their peewees, peewees influence on them. You okay. know, it's also like 30 years too late, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, just, it's very confusing it's, why it even got made, you know, but yeah, again, this uh, executive son, Philip Mercator, is uh, fresh out of film school and looking to make a mark. It is three hours long. So you watch, a, you know, you're set to like watch the whole thing, right? Okay. <laughs> You uh seal your apartment up so that pizza smell stays inside. You've got caught jacking off up, title screens up. It's just beyond the title screen. It's like a it's like a warning screen that says the Herman Estate has no affiliation with this movie. Yeah, you know? okay. It's one it's like a disclaimer kind of a thing. Okay. Whatever. So you're sitting there in your apartment. Pizza smell in the air, anticipation in the air, and you hear a knock at your door, right? There's a knock. You think, man, I don't want to let this pizza sent out, but the oven hasn't, the oven door hasn't been opened yet. So it's still like mostly contained in the oven. You know, you think, okay, this might be, you know, the, the, you hear the voice from the other side go, uh, got a package signed. You signed for this? I look through the key, through the, I guess the keyhole, the people. I don't know how to tell you this any other way, but there's just like a deer standing on the other side on your front porch. And it's wearing like a, like a FedEx looking uniform, a deer. Yeah. It's like a deer. It's upright. It's holding, uh, holding your package and it's in its hoof. It looks through the, the people. It says, Hey man, I, I know you're in there. I got a lot of deliveries still. Could you come out? Okay. I, I opened the door. He's like clearly agitated. He goes, Thanks. He goes, sign, please. And he gives you like a tablet to sign, right? This guy is always so fucking rude. I don't even look at you, uh, it. I just sign. I don't even. You sign on the tablet, right? And then there, there's like another page. It's like, leave a tip. No, for your absolutely driver. not. No. You, uh, you click the no button and you just hear, you just hear this. Uh, this like uh, exhausted sigh. I'd look him in the eyes when I did it. He's wearing uh, like wraparound sunglasses. You can't uh, you can't see his pupils. <laughs> yeah, this guy is such a dick. I haven't seen him in a long time, but he's such a dick. So, uh, yeah, whatever. What's the package then? So he uh, gives you the package. He like runs away on all fours into his truck. He drives <laughs> off. You see just you see a hoof just come out of the side. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, you know, he's giving you the fucking bird, man. Like, you know it. <laughs> It's just like this singular hoof aggressively thrust out through the door. Oh man. Whatever. Let him you, uh, let him do it. Let you go back fun. inside. It's like um it's like a probably like a 10 by 12 box. It's pretty thin, you know. You open it up and it's actually like uh it's a it's a packet of papers that are like stapled shut you know and basically what it is is it's a it's a letter from a lawyer saying that you have been gifted you've been left a house 
in East Austin. Whoa. That uh, there was somebody who knew you that passed away. And Ooh. they left you, they left you their house. It was a woman named Roberta Nightingale. What's her story? You're like, I don't fucking. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know this person. Right. You know, I, I have no idea. So you, um, you look at the address and yeah, like maybe the, maybe the address looks familiar, you know? So you, you go, you like drive over there and it is in like a neighborhood where, um, you used to live. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I used to live out there. You used to live out there. And then you kind of like, think about it. You're like, how do I know this person? And you think about it and you, it clicks one day. You were walking through, you're like, how do I know this house? You're walking through the, the, the neighborhood one night and, uh, you saw that there was like a, a lady at this house who was like uh, changing a tire on her car. And it was just like a sweltering, like triple digit being beaten by the sun kind of a day. Right. Was I going to the RBM and, food mart? Uh, you were coming back from the RBM food mart. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. So, but this, this isn't the, this isn't like your apartment. It's like a different, a different place. So you were kind of like walking by. Right. You, yeah. uh, you walk by and you see this lady who's just like struggling to put this tire on your car, you know, on her car, sure. you know, and it's hot and you could feel the heat just like radiating up from the pavement. And you think no good deed goes unpunished. You go, miss, can I help you? She's a little bit of an older lady. So you help her like put this, uh, you change your tire on her car, you know, you, uh, you stand up and she's like, Oh my, you know, she's thank you so much, young man. I, I can't tell you how much I, I appreciate your help. And she like digs into her wallet and you get a smile across your face. You hold your hand out. <laughs> she puts a 20 in your hand. Nice. You turn and you go home. Right. You're like, that's how I I helped this lady change her tire. She, she did true. pay me, you know, $20, you know, but she left her house to me. So that's what's weird about it, right? <laughs> it's a little weird. It's weird because so you like uh you know, you you're like that's it's it's strange that this person who I had such like a limited interaction set of interactions with would do that. Um and so you you're like, you know, it's late at night, you go back home, you fill out the paperwork accepting this house, right? You go to uh the UPS store. They're closed. You leave it in a drop box. You know, it gets sent off the next day. A couple days later, you get keys in the mail. You go to the house. And the key slides into the lock. Like a hot knife through butter. You feel the lock disengage. and You open the house. And it's like a, it's a home that was built in the 50s. It's got a new roof as of six years ago. It's got um, stainless steel appliances. It looks like the living room was renovated within the last few years. Okay. It's all furnished. You know, it's just been lived in by uh, by an older woman. And you're like, this is so fucking surreal. You know, why would this person leave me this? Yeah. So and you start no, to like, like, there's no one I can ask about this. I wouldn't ask the lawyer or whatever. You did. You put yeah. Uh, so you you put a note in with the lawyer and with the stuff you sent right in the mail, and you're like, "Hey, what's the story with this?" And you get you get a a response letter back, and it just says, "She left you this in her will." So like you know you could look into it further or whatever, but you so you start walking around this house, right? Sure, that is. You're walking around, and uh, you you go through the mail. Right, that they've been piling up. You see, there's like a um, a letter, a, b- a bunch of letters, a bunch of things that like you probably shouldn't, you know, you should save for the attorney or whatever. Just stuff that's not yours, you know. Uh, you do. You see, there's a. She's got a, an answering machine, right, on the, like a phone on the wall. There's a okay. message. You hit play, and you hear, um, "Hi." My name is Kevin. Kevin Heaven. 
and I'm calling from the kingdom of heaven. Yes. And he he goes uh, he goes. Just wanted to confirm your appointment for new carpet installation next Friday. We'll be there bright and early with the sun. And then he then he goes uh, uh he, he's like uh, uh, where's the off and then he just it just hangs up right <laughs> Kevin Heaven's back all right cool <clears throat> so all you right. um you call uh the kingdom of heaven right because you're like I don't I should probably tell them you know because I'm you don't want to get stuck paying for this job right well, that's the last thing you want so you call the kingdom of heaven somebody answers they go oh, hi there my name is Revan you've called the kingdom of heaven. What can I do for you? Hi. Um, I just inherited a house and they, I guess they, ha they had scheduled a carpet installation with y'all. And I, I think I, I need to hold off on that. I need to cancel it, please. They go, sure thing. Let me get the address from you. So you give Brevin from kingdom of heaven, the address, right? Kingdom of heaven. He, uh, he pulled, you hear like the click clack of a keyboard in the background. He goes, Oh, he goes, actually, you know, that's been, that's paid for already because we could, because we could cancel it, but we would have, we would refund the person who paid it, but that that's paid for. That's been booked out for about a month because you want me to cancel it or should we proceed with it, with the, the new carpet? I mean, in that case, yeah, y'all can, yeah, let's just, let's just keep doing it. I guess he goes great. Thank you for checking in at the kingdom of heaven. Is there anything else I can do for you? Wait. Uh, so, so when would this, this process it's he goes, it's next Friday at dawn. At dawn, right. Okay. Um, yeah, cool. He was great. We'll see you then. And he hangs see up. See you later. You see, there's like a calendar hanging up in the kitchen. It's marked on there Friday dawn. It says carpet install and a smiley face underneath it. Uh so you kind of like slow you like you you call the attorney who um who's sending you the paperwork you confirm everything's legit you've taken ownership of the house you move your shit in you start to like redecorate you know you're taking you know again it's for it's for an older older lady you probably have a different sense of style you're taking her shit off the wall you're putting your shit up on the wall you're gonna have a, a garage sale with all of the stuff that you don't need oh like what just you know like um artwork uh linens jewelry just the stuff that's in the house you know that you, that you don't want a little ceramic he has he has like a probably about 1500 tiny ceramic dogs oh um, she's got a, she, she's got she's got a room where the walls are just filled with them right 1500 tiny ceramic dogs I'd keep a, I'd keep a few, so I'd keep a few of those and I'd keep a few jewels for like my niece or something, but yeah, I think I'm getting rid of most of that. So you, um, you put pictures up on the internet of like, uh, the walls of dogs. You put, you put a bunch of ads up for stuff about this yard sale. You got everything sort of staged in your garage, except for the, the, the walls of dogs, you're going to leave those up and let the people who are dealing with it figure it out because you're not going to be responsible if any of them fall and break. Yeah. So, um, again, you're you're in this this point of transition in your house, right? You're making it your home. So I'm going to live there. I, I wouldn't just try to like sell it. You're going to live there for now. Try it out, it's, I guess. It's, it, it's yours. You know, you don't have to pay any. You just have to pay taxes on the place, which is going to be significantly less than if you were to, you know, rent somewhere else or buy somewhere else. So do I like sublease my apartment then? I can't break my lease. It's at the very end of your lease. Oh, how coincidental. Okay. You know? Yeah. Serendipitous. Just how that, cool. just how that works out. Wow. So okay. you move all Fuck your it. shit in, right? That Thursday night, you lie in bed awake, and you're like, you have them send them over. Uh, you had you had the kingdom of heaven send you over like colors, like a color swatch of what's coming, and you know they gave you instructions to move your furniture around or whatever. That their their technician will be over in the morning. Does the house have a name? No, like some people name you can. Okay. I mean, you could name it whatever you wanted, but I don't know. I wouldn't. No. I wouldn't. I was just curious if somebody. 
Yeah, there nobody told you anything about a name. Okay. So uh you go to bed Thursday night. You look up when the the sun is rising at 7 a.m. So you're gonna get up early in preparation to meet this guy. Your alarm goes off in the morning, still uh pre-dawn. The last gray from the night before just kind of lingers on over everything. Oh yeah. The moment the first sunbeam breaks in through that kitchen window, you hear a knock at your door. You kind of stand up, you go to the door, you open it and standing in front of you is a man. Uh, he looks very unsure of himself. That's like the first thing you'll notice about <laughs> it is that he, yeah. he looks uncomfortable like talking to you. He he definitely is not a natural people person by any stretch. Oh man. And he says, hi, my name's Kevin, Kevin heaven. And I'm here <laughs> from the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> and he goes, I'll be your installer today. Okay. He goes, let's take a look. And he walks inside. He's wearing just like blue jeans, nondescript shoes, and a bright red polo tucked in with a braided oh. belt wrapped around his waist. Oh, man. Kevin. He's got dark black hair. He's got, he's got hairy forearms. He kind of like walks around the house and he's like looking. He goes, yep, this is just what we expected. Yeah. He goes, I'll go outside and get the first roll. So he like walks back to the truck. <laughs> he's by himself. He throws just a fucking whole roll of like padding, like carpet padding over his shoulder. <laughs> he drops it off in the doorway. He pulls like a that's strong. He pulls a blade from like it's clipped onto his belt. He pulls it from the clip and he starts cutting out the old carpet. I love watching people do stuff like this. People who like make stuff with their hands yeah. or whatever. It's so cool to like watch, you know? So I think I would like stick around. I think I would ask if I could like hang out. He says, uh, sure thing. I don't mind. Cool. He's got knee pads some, on. I make some coffee and I just fucking, he's got knee caps on. Knee, knee pads. pads. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's on his hands and knees, you know? Yeah. It makes sense. It was just kind of so a you make some visual. coffee, Right. You make coffee, you stand there in the, the doorway between the hallway that leads to your kitchen and the living room. Your robe comes open just a bit. Okay. You uh, feel it for a second and you are totally nude underneath, you know, and you kind of feel it. You go, oh, you hope you hope uh, he didn't notice, you know, but he is also like working at ground level and you're standing up. So he, who knows? I mean, uh, I would like, put... I could no, you run don't. and put <laughs> wait. I mean, why would after, I not after after that initial slip up you do, but at first, no, you were just nothing. The only thing between you and him was just that thin layer of cotton rope. Dang. So you see uh Kevin Heaven on his knees cutting out the carpet, right? He uh he goes to like put the padding in and he needs to cut a certain section of it. He reaches to his other hip and he's like, Oh, I must've forgot my measuring tape. That's what he says. And he pulls, he pulls a swatch of, of like carpet out of his back pocket. And it's like, kind of looks like, like thicker, higher pile. And you know, some carpet, when you brush it one way, it changes colors. It's like lighter or darker. Mm -hmm. So he kind of does that. And he draws like a measuring tape. And he holds the swatch in his hand and he kind of closes his eyes and he like mumbles something to himself. And you see a measuring tape just fall out of this carpet into his hand. Oh, man. He folds the swatch back up and puts it in his back pocket. He uses the measuring tape to measure off an area. <laughs> he cuts the padding, continues forward with his installation. Man. Like less time than you would think goes by. He's very fast at his job. And you're not even like, you had like two cups of coffee and you look up and your living room is perfectly carpeted. And uh, he kind of stands up, brushes some fibers from off of his clothes. And he goes, all done. 
He goes, I'll even help you move your furniture back. That's the kingdom of heaven way. Wow, thank you. So he like, and he is strong as fuck, man. Right? He is just like, <laughs> he picks up your couch, like pretty much on it on him by himself. Wow. Uh, just holds it out in front of him and he maneuvers it around really easily. Um, yeah, he like, he even kind of likes makes a couple suggestions. He goes, the entertainment center should be over here. You know, he's, he's like helping you. He's, he's got like a pretty keen eye for design. I would say I would listen to him. I, I do not have that eye at all. He goes, uh, I hate to do this, but may I use your restroom? Yeah. So he says, thanks. And he like walks down your hallway, <laughs> uses your restroom. You hear him taking a fat piss through the door. <laughs> <laughs> your front door's open. You've got like some trash on your lawn from, you know, the plastic and shit that, yeah. you know, some of the, the pieces of old carpet that are, that are left from before. And you're just kind of standing there in the in the living room and you hear you hear a voice go knock knock. And you turn around and standing in the doorway is uh is a guy who he looks a lot like you. Like he's kind of like your same build, you know. The only okay, difference yeah. is that he has like he has like a a thick head of of dark brown hair. Okay. <laughs> That's weird. And uh he kind of like he has like a plate in his hand with like saran wrap over it. And he he kind of like looks at you and he goes, Who are you? Uh I'm Patrick. I I this is my house now. I got it in a will. He says, Where's Fanny? And you're like, Fanny. And you're like, that was my nickname for her. Where's Fanny? Uh, well, she's dead, unfortunately. She died uh recently. You see him like he just he's like in shock. He just drops a plate to the ground. Oh, man, I'm sorry. You uh, it just shatters. Kevin Heaven's like walking back in the room. He goes, hi, I'm Kevin Heaven <laughs> and I'm from the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> and 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 the, the guy in the door is like, Fanny is gone. And you're just like, yeah, she died and left this house to me. Yeah. And he's like, how did you know her? And you're like, I helped her change her tire one time because how did you know her? And he gets like a faraway look in his eyes. He goes, she's been my best friend for the last 10 years. Wow. He goes, I lived across the street from her. Because I, I helped her out with everything. He goes, I, I took her grocery shopping. I took her to doctor's appointments. He goes, she didn't have any family. She, he goes, I was her family. Kevin Heaven comes up from the floor. The plate of cookies is still intact. You go, man, you're like, I'm so sorry. I, I don't know. I, yeah. I didn't I didn't know her. I, I just, I received paperwork that said she had left me this. I was really surprised. Yeah. And he kind of like, he kind of sobs a little bit. He goes, I'm sorry. He goes, she, we were just very close. And you're like, no, I understand. And uh, he kind of like, you see him kind of cry. Wow. And uh, Kevin Heaven like looks at you and kind of like motions towards you. So you step towards him. You give him a hug. You're like, hey, it's I'm really sorry. He goes, but it, it'll be OK. She's probably in a better place. And he goes, you know what? You're oh, probably no. right. She didn't feel well at the end. All right. And uh, and he goes on the bright side, the carpet right. we picked out looks great. He oh, looks at Mr. Kevin. And he goes, is Bryson. this? Is this cream corn? And Kevin, it's a cream corn taller. <laughs> what? Perfect. Yeah. And Kevin's like, sure is. Right. <laughs> he like, uh, again, he goes, we picked this out six months ago. And Kevin said, it was on back stock. So the supply chain hits everybody. We get it. Kingdom of heaven is not immune. Yeah. So, uh, you're kind of like hanging there with the guy. You pat him on the back and you go, you go, well, you know, you're welcome to hang out. Come over anytime, neighbor. And you extend your hand and you go, my name is Pat Dean. And he kind of looks at you. He goes, my name is Dean Patrick. (laughs) 
And he goes, do you live around here already? And you're like, yeah, like I li- I'm her, I'm her neighbor just up the street. And so he goes, so she told her lawyer she wanted to give her neighbor her house. And he messed up our names. He's like, that's probably what this is, right? He kind of like, I know, maybe. Laughs. He's like, that's got to be what it, he, he goes. I was her best friend. She told me she was going to leave the house to me. He's like, uh, do you have the name and number of that lawyer? Yeah, I gave it to him. He goes, you know, you could do the right thing here and let me have the house. I don't even, I, I don't know anything about you. You're just some guy who just walked in. I can't just take you at your word. He goes, I knew the color of the carpet. He goes, I knew her nickname. He goes, I bet you found a picture of me and her in here. And you're kind of like, yeah, I guess I did. You know, you look out in the garage. There's like a box full of photos. He's in like several of them. Well, look, right now, um, I'm going to stay here for now, talk to the lawyer, and we'll get it figured out. I'm going to stay here tonight, though. He goes, this house is mine. I don't know that. I don't know anything about you. I barely know anything about this lady. Talk to the lawyer. That's his job to do. I'm fucking sick of this. He goes like, he's like, yeah, you didn't know anything about her. He goes, why would you, why would she give you the house when she clearly meant to give it to me? We have the same name pretty much. We're both neighbors. And he's like, look at us. He goes, we even look the same. And then he runs a hand through that shock. (laughs) Dark brown hair. And he says, well, almost. Oh, what a jerk. Uh, Look, man, get out of my house and we'll figure it out later in the week. You got to go. He goes, this is not over. It, no, I know it's not. So Kevin Heaven is like, well, I'm done. And he oh, just, he was like, there the whole time? The whole time. Yeah, he was just eating off that plate of cookies. The The plate is empty. He gives the plate back to uh <laughs> to Dean. And he says, those were great. And Dean just kind of looks at him. He goes, you ate all my cookies. He goes, you son of a bitch. Whoa. And and he goes he goes and he, and he looks at you and he's like I'm sure you've got no problem with this he goes you don't have a problem taking things that don't belong to you you gotta go tears well up in his eyes I don't care he uh he turns to like leave right there was one thing that you left from hers that was like hers it was like a sign that she had over over the um. Over like the doorway, uh huh. It says, uh, <laughs> it said, if you can read this, I'll see you later. If you can't, fuck you, <laughs> right? And uh, oh man, and, like, as he as awful. he like goes to step out, he sees it and he just laughs. Tears running down his face. He goes, you know where we. He goes, you know where we got that. No. He goes, we got that. We got that at a flea market in Denton. Take we it. We went there for a rose festival. Take it. I don't. I don't need it. He takes it. It's heavy. It's wood. He goes. You know what? I think I will take it. He pulls right. it down from the wall. He bashes you over the head with it. What the? <laughs> he, he cuts you. He busts you open, and uh, your blood just runs onto that cream cord colored carpet. Uh, standing it, and Kevin Heaven goes. I'm out of here. And Why he, are you? He gets in his truck and just fucking leaves. He, uh, yeah, you had already signed off on like the completion of the job. He just stayed there eating those cookies. And uh, that, <laughs> that that guy, uh, yeah, he, uh, he takes oh, your body. Man. He, uh, he takes he takes your body <laughs> oh, and he puts no. it in the garage, right? And uh, the next day, he opens uh, he opens the garage door with all of like the um, all of like the all of her old things, you know all of her garage sale stuff, all the stuff of hers that you were going to sell off and people yeah. show up at like 6 a.m. and they just see your body right there amongst all this stuff. And uh, yeah, the, the the cops just come and they take your body away. The sale does not go well, you know? Yeah, I so. can't imagine. I mean, he must have gotten in huge trouble for that. I mean, they found my dead body. Yeah, they found your body, but, you know, there was... He took the, he took the board with him and now sits above his... Uh, above his doorway as he uh, leaves his house oh they couldn't link him to the murder 
No, he kept it. I mean, no, he just kept it and he walked across the street Man. and took it and it sits there and he never wiped your blood off of the bottom corner of it. Oh man, I kept forgetting that um that Kevin Evan was standing there. Yeah, he was there the whole time. <laughs> he was there the whole time. He witnessed the whole th- what did he how come he didn't do anything? He doesn't get involved in such trivial things. He was just there eating those cookies. His job was done. Okay, there's so much fucking evidence being left around that they should be able to link him at least to these to this. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're they're they do contact him and uh they the the cops call him and they they ask to see him so he like goes downtown right excuse me he meets with the detectives and and he says uh he's like i will not tell a lie he said and he says i was there to complete the carpet transition he says i left shortly thereafter he doesn't lie to them but he definitely like leaves out a lot of the truth ah uh. Because he can't, I mean, he's got a, he's got a fucking business to run, you know? He can't get caught up in all that shit. He was my last. Business to run. Oh, man. So, no. Nights. What? It keeps him awake for, nights. <laughs> several. Him awake for several nights. <laughs> several? Well, yeah, I mean, he witnessed, he witnessed your death. I... And, and, you know, but, you know, again, he, first and foremost, he's a, he's a businessman. Well, I mean... It is God family business in that order. But he, you know, had to protect. Had to protect his family, had to protect his business. And, you know, he can't have he can't be associated with a murder. He's a man of God. Whatever. All right. Yeah, you just you bleed out into the fucking carpet right there. That green corn colored carpet. Half a pot of cold coffee. On the countertop. And your he dead body in the stuff. garage. <laughs> he she got all my stuff. That's the that, that you know what I mean. That sucks yeah. that he got all of the stuff that I bought. This guy's a dick. Yeah, nobody ended I, up buying those uh, all those little dogs. They just stayed there, and the house got torn down, and they just got crushed in with it. Nobody wanted to buy that house after the murder. After they couldn't man. get that blood out of that cream corn color carpet. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, 